episode of Let's Be Frank starting now! Hello all! Ever since I was younger, I have loved collecting things. I think that's pretty obvious by some of the stuff I have up here. But, um, something I don't talk about a lot at all, only a few people actually know about these things, is my collection of weird and wild creature cards. Um, I have them right here, actually. Uh, I collected them a lot growing up. I get a set, I get a bunch of them in the mail every month, I believe it was. This was, this was like close to 10 years ago that I, I stopped collecting these and it was because I didn't have my own funds back then and mother decided to cut me off. <laughs> but, um, there's a lot of really cool cards in here, all detailing things, anything from dinosaurs to poisonous and venomous creatures, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about them, because I don't see many people talking about these at all. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So, there were always little, um, categories with these cards. There were seven different categories, and we're going to go over one card per category. So, starting off, the first category is Monsters of the Past, and those are, of course, all dinosaurs. And so I wanted to talk about a dinosaur today that I don't see brought up a lot in pop culture. And that is the Amargosaurus. <laughs> All these dinosaurs have really stupid names. But this is a very cool dinosaur. Obviously, you know, these were all made before scientists discovered our new information about dinosaurs and how they really looked. But with all of its bright colors and the fact that this is a long-necked brontosaurus type dinosaur, it's got spikes jetting out of, it, out of its neck, it's got a long fin and everything, that's super cool. And uh, this one, it's just always intrigued me to look at, and I look at both the front and back of the card all the time, and um, it's a very, very colorful dinosaur. And that's why it always stood out to me most. And so the Amargosaurus should definitely be featured in more pop culture movies. Uh, Disney, Dinosaur 2, please, come on. All right, we're gonna be moving on now to the Nightmares of Nature portion. And I wanna to talk to you guys about the Ham, Hama, <clears throat> hold on. Hamadrius, Ham, Ham, hmm. The monkey! A baboon! We're gonna be talking about this very horrifying ape. Now, admittedly, these monkeys are terrifying to me. Any, these, the baboons, the mandrels, even a chimpanzee, any one of them can snap at any second rip your face off. And that has scared me since I was a little child. But I guess all of these cards are meant to scare children. Some of these are so graphic, I'm surprised they are targeted to children. <laughs> but um, this baboon... They uh, thankfully don't live anywhere near Florida, so I think we're safe. We're gonna be talking about some things that live near Florida a little bit later. But um, yeah, I don't know what to say about a random monkey. I just thought it was cool looking and scary. All right, and moving on from Nightmares of Nature over to Toxic Terrors, we have the Killer Bee. Now this bee may look like a normal bee, but it is much more deadly than that. Uh, this bee can be found primarily in Africa, South America, and North America, so we're all in danger. <laughs> and, um, yeah, apparently this bee has not many discernible characteristics from your average, uh, other bee. I'm gonna say honeybee, but honeybees are special. They're fluffier, so you'd be able to tell. <laughs> These bees are much more terrifying. They look kind of like hornets. Um, so if this bee is ever in your vicinity, get out of there, because whether you're allergic to bees or not, this sting could kill you. <laughs> okay, and moving on, oh, I just said moving on, I can't keep repeating myself Frank, like this. Frank, what is wrong with you? Let me be original. And now that we've finished the Toxic Terrors, we're going to talk about the Monsters of the Deep. And the one I want to point out to you guys today is the Gulper Eel. Now this one's probably a little bit more well known, it is an eel after all. But this thing is freaking terrifying. Its mouth can open up to two feet wide and it can swallow anything it can fit in there. Not a lot is gonna escape this thing. Not only that, it's one of those uh, creatures that lives down at the very bottom of the ocean where it's super dark and it's got this like little glowing light on its tail to lure in its prey, like an anglerfish, which is another one of these cards actually. This thing is horrifying, and it's one of those cards that when I was growing up, I was hoping wasn't actually real with all my heart, but even I cannot escape the Gulper Eel. 
done with the monsters of the deep and now we're going to move on to the tiny terrors now this section is mostly filled up with bugs and like microscopic organisms but uh, so you'll see a lot of ants and spiders but what i want to talk to you guys about now is the green lacewing bug this thing lives anywhere under the arctic circle and anywhere in the world except antarctica so they're they're a fairly common bug and they're not the deadly I'm gonna kill you in an instant bug like most of these spiders in here like I mentioned earlier they uh, eat mostly aphids and they especially in their larva phase and when they're adults they eat plants so they're not really scary I just thought they look cool and unique you know um, they don't live very long up to nine weeks three in the larva stage and six in their adult stage but besides that they're just kind of there and they're pretty cool looking so let's move on Okay, we're done with the tiny tears, and now it's time for the strange wonders. This uh, section is just dedicated to creatures that look kind of different, unique. It can be anything from uh, colorful bugs to odd acting reptiles or just things that look very strange like a giraffe. But we're not talking about the giraffe. We are talking about marine iguanas. I just really like old iguanas, which is why I wanted to talk about them. Uh, these iguanas are very um, unique, though, because they spend, they can swim underwater, spend a lot of time under there. They can hold their breath for up to an hour, I believe it was. Um, pretty freaking cool. I mean, I, I don't know a lot of other reptiles that can do that. Um, they live right around the Galapagos. You give me a weird look, Aaron. What's wrong? Most reptiles can do that. We're not including this. <laughs> Frank, I think we're going to include this in the video. No. We continue. We're still listening. Are we going to keep this whole thing? Of course. <laughs> Look how cool he looks. <laughs> All right. Done with the strange wonders. And now we get to my favorite section of all. The monsters of the mind. Now, these creatures don't actually exist. Supposedly. <laughs> but these are creatures from cryptids and Greek mythology and whatnot and legend that um, humanity has uh, uh, had terrify them all throughout history. And the one I want to talk about first is saw in the thumbnail, the skunk ape. This guy supposedly lives in Florida in the Everglades. It's a horrifying uh, 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 bear ape type creature and it supposedly smells awful like the worst smell you've ever had the unfor disfortune the worst smell you smelled in your entire life <laughs> and um i've never personally seen one and i hope i never do if, if it exists that is all right next i want to talk about somebody very, very cool, our special guest today, Typhon! He is a Greek monster from Greek mythology who had a, a showdown with Zeus that was apparently so extraordinary and violent that it left all of the lands in complete ruin. This guy has the head of a wild beast, 99 serpent heads coming out of everywhere else, and the legs of snakes. I know what you're saying, snakes don't have legs. You know, just, you know octopus tentacles like like things he's a horrifying creature and um I, I always used to skip over his card whenever i was looking through them because i i preferred the ones that looked more based in reality because they were you know they were scarier things that looked like they could exist this guy's so cool though i wish i'd paid more attention to him back then maybe would have had more of a knack of Greek mythology today but regardless if this guy can stand such a fight against zeus then he's got to be super cool and powerful. All right, next I want to talk about the Tokoloshi, the thing that scared me most when I was a kid. Out of the entire box, I couldn't stand this thing. I, really, it's just a little gremlin of a, of a thing, but the scary part is, the reason it is a gremlin in the first place is because it, it, it had its brain, eyes, and tongue removed Judging by the picture, with, with, with maximum force, no sedatives at all. And now it can't think for itself, see for itself, or talk for itself. All it does is serve some invisible master. And what does it do for its master? 
just goes around being a little jerk and you know tear up the homework of children and just rip apart rooms and terrorize the person who was sent to terrorize the scary part about this thing though is only the person it was sent to terrorize can see it and and nobody else can even know it's there and it can even turn itself invisible by swallowing a pebble you can thank Zulu and Zosha, Zo Zosha, Fo I forget how it's pronounced, folklore for this horrible thing. <laughs> Gosh, I hate it so much. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Chupacabra. <laughs> now, if the uh, Tokoloshi scared me the most as a kid, this uh, Latin American folklore is what scared Aaron the most. <laughs> Isn't that right, Aaron? <laughs> it has a wingspan of up to 13 feet across and is said to be able to ambush its prey without making a sound. This thing preys on animals and people and will suck their blood like a vampire. Most commonly associated with stealing goats, this thing, this horrible creature, we just <laughs> moved on its own. <laughs> is literally keeping Aaron in a state of panic. This creature is absolutely horrifying, and the worst part is sightings have been made here in the U.S. Rare is most commonly seen in South America, but it has taken its tropical vacations here. Isn't that right, Aaron? No. Yes. Read the card. <laughs> Okay, and that was the Weird and Wild Creature Cards. If you'd like to see more in the future, because I have a lot more, let me know in the comments. Follow me on my Instagram at lesbyfrank2020, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. And with all that being said, until next time.